Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call us right now for more help at 866-945-8070. How transactions in QuickBooks Online impact reports. This is important, I think, from the standpoint of, not I think, I know, from the standpoint of both the bookkeeper and the business owner, this is important to understand. If you're a bookkeeper, then you definitely need to understand this stuff. We're gonna get into debits and credits a little bit because I want you to understand when you're posting a transaction, when you record a check, how that's going to impact the financial statements. You should be able to predict and tell me before you hit the save button, exactly where and whether or not that's going to impact the financials, right? If I'm recording a check, of course, money's coming out of the bank account, but where's the other side of it hitting, right? And if you start to understand your debits and credits, which I'm gonna talk about in the remainder of this video, then you know that credits actually reduce bank accounts. It's the opposite of what the banks have us trained to think. And accordingly, if I'm recording a check and the bank account in the dropdown in that transaction is what's being credited or reduced for that matter, then by default, anything that's in that detailed line item in that same transaction is being debited. Now this is where it helps to understand debits and credits because then I know if I'm hitting an expense account, I'm increasing that expense. But if I'm hitting a liability account, I'm decreasing that liability, which when you think about it makes sense because if I write a check to pay off a loan, then it should reduce that liability. It should reduce the amount that I owe, but converting that into debits and credits really helps you understand what's going on. Now, if you're the business owner, this is important to understand because you want to at least understand what your bookkeeper is doing. You want to know enough to know whether or not he or she knows what they're doing, right? So it's important to understand this, at least on kind of a superficial level. So we're gonna get into this. And also before I take you there and show you my screen, I wanna hold you hostage for 15 more seconds and let you know that by the time you're watching this, there's going to be a webinar either scheduled or recorded. Either way, you can purchase and attend it live if you've caught this soon enough. Otherwise, you can purchase and watch the recording after the fact. But I'm going to go much deeper and go through 16 different transactions, explaining the debits and credits, showing you what are called T accounts. Those of you who are bookkeepers probably know what that is. Business owners, maybe not. But you're going to learn. It's a way of illustrating before we record the transaction exactly where that transaction is going to go. And I promise you, when you're done with this video as well as the webinar, you'll have a very deep and thorough understanding of exactly how your transactions are impacting the financial statements. And it's going to make you a more powerful bookkeeper. And as a business owner, it's going to give you a much better understanding, especially when something's wrong, how to fix it when something doesn't look right. Oftentimes you know that something doesn't look right, but you don't know how to fix it. This will give you that understanding. But even better than that, before even recording the transaction, you'll start to be able to think through, where should this go? Where should this impact my profit and loss? Should it impact my profit and loss? Maybe it should only go on the balance sheet. These are the kind of things that I think will make you a more powerful bookkeeper or a more powerful user of QuickBooks Online when you begin to understand the kinds of things I'm showing you here in this video and coming up in the webinar that I'm going to be doing. So let's have a look at my screen and I'll show you what I'm talking about. How transactions in QuickBooks Online impact reports. This is really important, I think, and you're going to realize if you don't already why this is tremendously valuable after you've seen this whole entire video. So try and stick it through to the end because I'm going to show you demonstrations of what it looks like when you enter transactions and the impact that those transactions have directly on the balance sheet and the profit and loss. And I've cleared out all transactions from this sample company file so that you can see from essentially a blank balance sheet and a blank profit and loss exactly what this looks like. So we're going to run this for all dates actually. That way you can see everything. The only thing I've gotten here is an opening deposit in the bank for $1 million. Wouldn't we all like to start our businesses off with a million dollars? That would be awesome. Um, Let's run the profit and loss for the same date range. When you do all dates, it just shows you the report for absolutely everything, all of time, day one until today. Um, And even if you have things posted in the future, because it's, again, all dates. It's not just through today. Um, Let's duplicate this one more time because I want a tab open that I can use to record transactions. So the banks have us confused, right? The banks, when they give you money, they call it a credit. In accounting, credits actually reduce your account balance right? Debits increase assets, credits reduce assets. Bank accounts are assets. Your bank account is the cash that you own. You have rights to it, right? So it's a little bit backwards. And for that matter, what I want to encourage you to start to think about 
when you're recording transactions in QuickBooks Online is exactly how it's going to impact the balance sheet and the profit and loss. So if I start with, an, let's just say it's a check, and I'm thinking about recording a check to pay my landlord, right? Whatever bank account is shown here is being credited because I'm reducing the bank's balance with this check. I'm writing a check. I'm creating a demand note that says pay this person whenever they present it for payment, right? And so whatever, so if this is being credited, then whatever account down here by default is being debited, right? So when I'm recording a check or an expense, or for that matter, a transaction that re represents money coming out of my account, then the drop down up here, which is you know the bank account in this case, is what's being credited. This is what's being debited. Now, why does this help to know? Because now I know, and again, this is gonna come with time as you learn debits and credits a little bit more, and I do have videos on that. But as you learn this, you'll understand that, okay, well, whatever I put here is being debited. Rent is an expense account. So you can stop and think, okay, what happens to an expense account when it's being debited? Well, debits increase expenses. You know, and again, you can Google uh, or search on YouTube for videos on little tips and tricks for how to remember that. I find it's easy. There's five account types, right? So what do debits increase? They increase assets and they increase expenses, right? Credits increase everything else. So what's left? Liabilities, income, and equity. Right, those are your five account types. Everything that you ever have in your chart of accounts is going to fall under one of those categories. So if I record a rent check for $2,500, I wanna be able to predict what's going to happen. So on the balance sheet, we're gonna reduce the bank balance. On the profit and loss, we're gonna show an expense where right now there's literally nothing, which means we're gonna end up with negative 2,500 as our net income that negative 2,500 is going to also flow back to the balance sheet in the equity section, because when I lose money, when I have a loss, that reduces the equity of my business. Let's save this and see if I know what I'm talking about. So I'll hit save and close. We'll update the balance sheet. There it is, right? There it is. I now have 2,500 less than 1 million. Over here, there's my $2,500 rent expense. So that's a pretty simple one, right? Write a check, I'm crediting the bank account to reduce the bank balance, and I'm debiting whatever goes into that detail account line item on that payment. In this case, it was the rent expense, right? But what if instead now, I'm writing a check to pay off a loan? Well, let's back up and first of all, let's receive a loan. So again, we're gonna record a deposit because that's what happens when we borrow money from the bank is they put money in our account and we go to loan payable. Now what's happening here is we're increasing the balance in my checking account, right, or iBank, right? We're gonna add the loan, let's say it's 20,000. Okay, and then we're, so we're, this is getting a debit, right? Because remember, debits increase assets. So this is being increased, debit to the bank account. Whatever's here, remember we're in a deposit transaction. So in a deposit transaction, we're always debiting the bank account that's listed here, which means we're crediting Whatever's here, now credits increase liabilities. So that makes perfect sense. I'm receiving the money and now it's a liability. I owe it, I have to pay it back to the bank. So that's why it's now a loan payable. And so credits increase liabilities. So we're gonna increase the bank balance by 20,000 and we're gonna increase the amount of money that we owe to the bank by the same 20,000. So again, if I hit save and close and then go here, my bank balance has now been increased by 20,000 and my loan payable, the amount that I owe the bank has been increased by 20,000. This is an example of a transaction that has no impact on the profit and loss, right? I can update it, I can run it, nothing's ever gonna change here because there was no income or expense. That's what the profit and loss shows is income and expenses and all that happened here was I got an extra 20,000 dumped into my account by the bank and now I've gotta pay the bank back, right? So there's an example of a transaction and you'll see that a lot that impacts only the balance sheet. Right, so now let's record a check because now let's say it's a month later and we're gonna pay them off or pay off a piece of it, right? So we record a check and again, a check or a payment that comes out of the bank account is crediting the bank account, which means we're gonna debit whatever account goes here. In this case, loan payable, right? So the bank would be iBank, right? Or whoever loaned me the money. Somehow it's not letting me do a lowercase i. There we go. Very particular about these things. All right, and so if I'm paying $1,000 off, now of course normally this would be split between interest and principal, but I'm just keeping things simple for the sake of illustration here. Um, so if I save and close this, now again we're recording a transaction that only impacts 
the uh, the bank the balance sheet, right? Because again, I'm I'm taking money out of my bank account and using it to reduce the loan. Now, if there was interest in here, let's actually look at that. So interest expense. If there is interest expense, then this will now affect the PL. So let's say $100 of this was actually interest expense. $900 is the amount that's going to pay down the loan. So the total payment's still $1,000. Now when I hit save and close, I've now reduced this by $900, the loan payable, right? I've reduced my bank account by the full $1,000, right? The whole thousand left the bank account. Most of it went to show a, a pay down on the loan payable. But a piece of it, $100, actually went over here to the PL in the form of interest expense. So here's an example of a transaction that affects both balance sheet and profit and loss statement, right? So that's kind of what happens when we borrow money and then <clears throat> repay it in a set of books. But again, it's impactful. I'm hoping you, hoping you can see that now. It's impactful to record these transactions and look and understand their direct impact on these financial statements. The more you think about things this way, the more you're going to be able to predict what something should look like on the balance sheet and or the P&L when you record it. And based on that, when you get into trickier kinds of transactions, you can back into how to best record them based on the fact that you know where it should show up and how it should show up on the financial statements. At the end of the day, this is the picture that we're painting is the profit and loss on the balance sheet. It's the financial picture, what the company looked like at a moment in time on the balance sheet and how the company performed over a period of time, which is essentially what the P&L or profit and loss statement is telling us, right? So I can go through example upon example, but I think that gives you an idea. And again, I'm hoping that you will sign up for or get my webinar that goes much more in depth and I explain a lot more about the debits and credits using T accounts. So I really walk you through on a much more slower basis, if you will, exactly what I'm showing you here. And I'm going to walk through 16 different transactions in roughly a two hour webinar. Probably won't take the whole two hours, but I'm leaving time for questions and answers. That, my friends, is how transactions in QuickBooks Online impact reports. As always, I hope you learned something here, had a little fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely, absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.